Hello and welcome to studying Batik in the Hmong style. So we've been learning a little bit about the Black Hmong culture from Sipa in Vietnam, and they have these beautiful Batik textiles or cloth fabric that they make, and then they dye it with these beautiful patterns. They use an indigo color for their dye, that's what's traditional for them. And then, as I said, they draw these beautiful patterns using lines and shapes. And the patterns and shapes actually each have meanings, as you can see here. There's some of them. You can pause this and rewind as much as you need to. So I looked at those pictures and I took some notes on the parts of the patterns that I liked and thought were easy enough that I could draw them. So I'd like you to do that too. And you'll need some paper, a pencil, and two rulers, one wider than the other. And for this, you can use any kind of paper. I'm using uh, computer printer paper. So I've got my two rulers here. I've got one that's wider than the other. I'm gonna start over on one side of my paper. I'm gonna trace the sides of my big ruler, my fatter or wider one. And then I'm gonna put my skinnier one in the middle of that when I trace that. So here's the other side with my big ruler. You might have to try kind of hard there. You might need some help. Here we go. So here's what I want you to remember. When we trace with our ruler, we gotta have at least two points of contact. That means you're touching the ruler in two places. So I've got two of my fingers holding it still and my fingers are spread apart. If I have both my fingers together, on one end of the ruler, it's gonna move. So we gotta hold our fingers apart on the ruler. So there I go. I've traced the other ruler, the skinny ruler, inside the middle of the wide ruler. And it's gonna give me this nice double line. This might be a little tricky. I think it's maybe one of the trickiest skills in this video, so. If it doesn't work out, keep trying. Use that eraser. There we go, I've got my whole finger on the ruler there, so that is my two points of contact. And now I'm gonna find about the middle of that middle row. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna try to make my dots that go all the way down evenly spaced or pretty close to it. And I'll do that on the other side too. I noticed on some of those batik cloths, there was a dot pattern like this. I liked it. All right, there's my dots. Next, I'm gonna make some horizontal lines. I'm gonna trace my big ruler again. paper steady. There we go. Holding it in two places and draw a straight line. Now I'm gonna pencil in lightly a zigzag line. It's important to remember when you're drawing these lines, you know, if you draw them light at first, uh, it's a lot easier to erase if you make a mistake. But if you get it right, you can always draw it darker again later. That's no problem. So draw it light until you get it right. That's what they always say. All right, so in the middle, I'm going to make a big diamond. And that diamond is kind of the rice flower shape, according to my research. I like rice, so I want there to be rice flowers. Here's my diamond, and now I noticed it had these sticks coming out the sides of it. I'll get my line a little bit darker. I think I'm coming back over my lines with more correct versions of those lines. All right. Now I'm gonna add some spirals in here. See how it goes around itself. 
And according to my research, this spiral represents a snail. Snails are pretty cool. Take your time. Don't rush. There we go. So there we go. I've got my batik design ready. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you want to use any of these patterns, go ahead. This is just a suggestion. Next week we're going to put it on watercolor paper and cover our design in glue. So, I can't wait to see what you make, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.